thing about promotions, you have to know your fan base. You have to know that it's not rich bankers who are going to these shows. It's usually, you know, poor people, which I was growing up. I would have loved to see a fucking flyer at a laundromat whenever I was growing up. I'm not used to seeing this many flyers at once. Well, it's because one fucker got six shows in two and a half weeks. I do all the DVDs and the flyers and shit, and that's... We do shows, we do double shots maybe two to three times a month, so, uh... Every other day, it's there. Hey, I need flyers, I need tickets, I need a commercial, I need a DVD, I need a commercial, I need a DVD, I need another commercial, we need two more flyers, and we need tickets. It took me this long to realize what I called you for. Yeah, I need uh, the tickets for April 15th. Thank God I have other people to help me, like Skylar Skelly, who does all the promoting, like, promoting as far as marketing, I would say. He's more of the marketing guy, does the production aspects of stuff. Who he basically works 24-7. All the production and editing was done by Skylar Skelly himself. And it's really good. I hope everyone buys it. Then Ladder does, like, a lot of the business and stuff with uh, getting venues and, and trying to get, like, all that kind of stuff taken care of. You see how tired I look? That's because we're doing indie wrestling the right way at Anarchy Championship Wrestling. You can follow the message boards all over the country on the internet. You can follow, you know, this little company says, we're going to do this, we're going to do this. We're going to turn wrestling back into the territories. I'm telling you right now, Anarchy's the only one doing it. Hi, Pro Wrestling. What's up? going to be here in uh, what's about a week. At the ballroom? Yeah. That's us. You should kind of bring a ton of friends. You guys have a nice night. It's kind of the demographic we go for. The Hispanics. Minorities are more like into pro wrestling now. Because it sort of stems back to the whole American pro wrestling being so exposed. Whereas Lucha Libre isn't and that sort of thing. So well, they're watching Galavision and still like loving the sport. They'll pay 10 bucks to come see. Jacob Ladder, Darren Challenge, as far as being promoters, um, I mean, they're doing a lot of the little things right. I mean, they're, they're learning from their mistakes. One of the most frequent questions I get is, what makes ACW different? Why, why is it so successful in comparison to other companies? And I've worked all over the country, and I can say the difference is most people run wrestling shows. ACW runs a business. We insist that we were going to do flyers and do like the old guys did, where you take the young boys, the ring crew, and you stick them with a bunch of flyers in their freaking hands, and you say, hey, you know what? Wednesday night, you better be in Seguin. You better be putting flyers in every little mom and pop restaurant, bar, business that'll let you, because we're going to be here in a week, and that's your job. You're going to do it the old fashioned way, the way our forefathers in wrestling got the word out, and they did it. Walk in and like, dude, shit, you not. Everybody's like, and I'm like, you know, you know what the hell? And I'm like, uh, everybody turns around and looks at me, and they're like, yeah, we, will, of course. Look at the shirt you're wearing. This is I love hot moms. Oh yeah. I'm like, well, at least it's nothing racist, and you know, I'm not gonna make an ass of myself at Walmart this time. It was my job to make sure that the ring crew handed out flyers. Make sure that they had flyers. Make sure that the, whatever town it was we were going to got flyered. All we basically do is just go around and talk to like as many people as we can in the shortest period of time as we can. Yeah, we just plug the shit out of it. Like, we both got ACW t-shirts on. We walk into places and leave them like stacks of flyers like this. Ask them if we can put flyers up in the... And get free donuts. Don't forget that. Oh, yeah, yeah. And free donuts. Free food's always good. And I'm working for one of the greatest promotions on the indie scene right now, the hottest thing on the indie scene right now, and that's Anarchy Championship Wrestling. So as far as I'm concerned about my dream coming true, it has. So about 23 hours a day I spend booking shows. Basically starts out a little list of names, who's going to be there. Then I throw up a bunch of matches, what I want in my head, and I do it all in pencil because none of this ever makes it to the actual show. 
Anarchy Chancellor, and we're all about turning the clocks back as far as tradition, respect, business. But of course, we're turning the clocks way, way forward as far as blood, gore, and athleticism. Two people can be talking in New York going, hey, where are you working on Saturday? And they'll be like, oh, I'm in Texas. And nobody thinks, we're at Texas. Yeah. They know that they're working in Anarchy Championship Wrestling. So a lot of our guys come from the East Coast, the Philadelphia area, such as a guy like uh, Mitch Ryder, per se, who I actually just got his flight info, and I'm actually sending it to him right now. The Texas wrestling scene is, is great. The thing is, is that they, it's like any other territory, any place else you go in the country. They've been giving shit for so long, and yeah, these crooked-ass promoters come in here, and they, and they rob and rape and pilfer pillage these towns and, and, and give them a shit show, um, don't advertise. Uh, walk out the back door, uh, all the stuff that they do, and then uh, we get branded by that. So as a wrestling promoter, every time that I have to go and get a building or a venue for an event, I have to put this little thing called a security deposit down. I gotta worry about, did we put the deposit in? Did we pay the rent? Did we get the chairs here? Did we sell tickets? Do we do enough advertising? And a security deposit, you know, you normally get it back unless you book guys like Showtime Summers, who tends to break a lot of shit. Boom! I've known Showtime since I started in this business. We kind of grew up in this business together. He has pictures where he wears the belt to the gym, and he just... He is ACW to me. So Showtime is, how do I put it delicately, crazy? Um, no, he's an intense individual when he's wrestling, and that's cool. That's something he's always been, that's how he is. Just the commitment that he puts in, and, and with him, you show him a little bit of respect, and you go out and attempt to make him a star, and he's the most loyal person in the world. And I couldn't say enough nice things about Showtime. As a performer, he's by far, I think, the most consistent performer ACW has. Showtime couldn't have been a better champion. No one busts our ass more than him. Mitch Ryder, Showtime, for the ACW heavyweight title. They... Decided to get a little crazy. I don't think they collectively decided. I think Showtime decided that, that they collectively were going to get a little crazy. Fire all over the building if you want. Don't break anything. And what's he do? He works his way out to the outside. Brawl, brawl, brawl. Hey, you, give me a suplex on this table. <laughs> heard something and I was like what was that and I go to look and I see I see one of them laying on the table I'm like you've got to be kidding me and it's like it's slanted because it didn't break because these are like some heavy duty tables normally it sits like this I, I feel Anarchy Championship Wrestling has uh, got a good idea and uh, of course they're being run by two of the boys you always are four promotions that are being run by the boys because so many times promoters, you know, beat us out of money and they're the ones that make all the money and I've had them run out the back door. So anytime you get to work uh, for a promotion where one of the boys is also uh, the ones handing out the pay envelope, it, uh, it puts you at ease. I'm not your champion! That idiot drinks more fucking beer of the match than any human possible. More than Sandman, more than Stone Cold. That gentleman drank so many beers. I mean, I think when we were bleeding all each over, I got drunk just from him bleeding on me. I started coming to uh, independent wrestling shows on a regular basis and um, just really kind of became almost an addiction. And uh, I, I traveled all over the state trying to just see as much independent, up-close wrestling as I could. 
Here, get ready. I don't have any control over you. Get ready to control over you. Remembering being two years old, sitting on my grandpa's lap, watching Kevin Varnerick. Just out of nowhere, saw a little flyer here and there, start going to wrestling shows, and just start becoming one of the best fans here in San Antonio. JC Bravo, something I've never told him, I've never brought it up, we've never talked about it. I, I really see him as, as my protege. I, whenever I started wrestling back in the, in the golden age of wrestling, it, I was a fan. I showed up at every show I could go to, and I loved it. I was that loud, annoying kid in the front row at every show. First thing and the best thing about heckling these wrestlers out here, they can't take it. They love it. They want the fan participation, and that's why we come every show and give it to them. It's getting under these wrestlers' nerves. Boy, they can't take it. They love it. We give it to them. They take it. They give it back to us. It's the love that we have. Fans and wrestlers coming out on a weekend, not doing anything better. It's all part of the show. It's just a show. That's all you got to remember. These guys were the most obnoxious, annoying, heckling fans in the history of the world. And they did nothing but make the show better. Which is something you don't really want to tell fans because then they'll be like, oh, I'm annoying and they like it? Let's rev it up. I feel a lot, a lot more like a parent than I do a wrestling promoter or an owner of a company. They're my kids, and I love them. Every last one of them. a little bit crazy. We were all over the building, about suplex to a table, but, you know, your body adapts, you know. Your mind not, may not adapt, but your, your body adapts to what you're going through, the bruises, the fights. I've been at this for 15 years now, and I've had a lot of uh, good runs, and I've had a lot of low times, too, and I think the reason that I'm staying busy is because I have not deterred from my same old Memphis Southern Hill style. Once again, I, I kind of had to out wrestle the guy. You know, a lot of these guys are tough, they can fight. You know, that's one thing I bring to the table. First and foremost, I pride myself on, I, I, I love the old school wrestling, so I try to take it back to wrestling. No matter chairs, barbed wire, all the crap that comes into the ring, you know, you try to, you try to get the one, two, three at the end. Well, I think uh, part of the reason that, well, there's a couple of reasons why I've, uh, Showtime's probably getting the push that he's getting. He's got, a, he's got a good look, that lean, tight, muscular, aggressive, ultimate fight style kind of look around. So I think that's a... That's an easy end for him because, you know, he fits the role of that uh, shoot fighter image so well and, and which is so marketable. As we've seen this product in wrestling change so much uh, from the way it was 10 years ago, 15 years ago, hell, even five or six years ago. Uh, I think that, that, that what people are finding is that good old-fashioned psychology and that good old heel work and, and walking and talking and, and being conniving and cheating and making those people love to hate you. I think it brought my name back. 
it had always been lingering there. The Scott Summers that that everybody saw when I first broke in and now are totally two different monsters. Um, I think it put me on the map. I kind of, I kind of, you know, was like, hey, you know, I'm I'm here to fucking play. You know, there's lots of great wrestlers in, in Texas, man. Both of them better than me. Just you know, I think I bring a lot to the table. I think I'm entertaining, and that's what this business is. Where Showtime Summers, who's in my opinion, as good as it gets. He's definitely one of the top guys in the state. He He's the epitome of anarchy. He's crazy. He's psychotic. So time to oh, right here. Right here. Ah. Oh. 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 He drops the brighter. Fuck him up, Russ. Oh, yeah. shit. He was the kind of guy who would Constantly promote the company, tell all his friends. Now, look at the ACW crowd, half of them are just Showtime's buddies. There's not a guy in San Antonio that's more on fire than, than Showtime Summers. And uh, it's just really been a surprise for some of us, us uh, more long term fans, how much he's just taken off as an ACW champion. <laughs> I think Anarchy uh, Championship Wrestling is trying to uh, head towards, you know, and market towards the hardcore fans, which has been done a lot, uh, especially up in Pennsylvania and uh, up in the Midwest quite a bit, but it hasn't really been done a whole lot down here in Texas, so they're just uh, trying to take uh, hardcore wrestling, turn it up a few notches, appeal to that type of market, and, and uh, they're getting the job done, you know, the bloody shows, the people have a great time, and uh, everybody goes home happy, and it's fun. So far, so good. I'm having a good time. It's fine when it's our stuff and we, you know, we're like, yeah, you know, go break a table or throw, you know, break some chairs. It's fine whenever we give them the okay and it's our stuff, but in Seguin it wasn't our stuff. Your ACW Heavyweight Champion, yeah. Mr. Showtime, Scott Summers. Those guys, I think they they fucking went through a table that wasn't ours. They broke like three chairs. We were trying to like sneak them out to the U-Haul when people couldn't see. April fifteenth. Kissy will be there. Fucking hell. Tell them fucking don't touch shit. We give them more than enough fucking toys and they fuck. God damn it. And yeah, and we're trying to hide this stuff. We're propping it. We're propping the table up with like a phone book. We're trying to hide the chairs. But we ended up getting caught. and So I had to pay for all this stuff. And then at the end of the show, Showtime took the mic, throws it down. So I have to buy a new microphone. So this dude, with him, I guess Mitch too, within... Within a 10 minute match, they end up costing me like 500 bucks. And I don't know if you've seen ACW budget, but 500 bucks is quite a lot of money to me. That, that's my rent in my apartment. Life of a promoter. Now I gotta go to the owners of the building. Now, me, Jacob Ladder, who just bled all over the building, big tough guy, has gotta go to this promoter and stick my nose where it doesn't belong and apologize. So Janie's coming. When she comes, I already told her, Janie, I'll look at the table. She already told her. You have to respect venues and their stuff or they won't let you come back and they'll take your money. No, Showtime, okay, he's a, a dude I just got carried away because, we, you know, we have someone, he has chemistry with him. Yeah. I said, dude, I like him. I know you don't want me to change your ass. I don't want you to change your, who you are, but I do need you. When we don't own this shit, not to break it. Don't fucking break it. And that's the kind of shit that a wrestling promoter has to put up with. Showtime Summers being crazy and breaking shit. Professional wrestling isn't cheap when you start out. You have to spend a lot of money. You know, like a lot of, you have to have a lot of capital to, to make things work out for you. So what I do before every show is I sit down with these trusty little envelopes. I fill them with cash. Which is getting bad, huh? You know, people need to make money if they're working for ACW. Hopefully, we get a lot more cash from the door. Which basically means hopefully people show up, give us some money, 
you know, buy some tickets so this money doesn't come out of this pocket. Sometimes it's very tedious, it's very tiring, it's very... You've had a crappy week or you've had a crappy day and you just don't want to go do it, but you still do it. You go put a smile on your face, you go out and you do the best you can. Every wrestling event is a big production, somewhat of a dance, to where everyone's involved from the wrestlers, to the ring crew, to the fans, to the promoters, to the bookers, everyone. We all, we all work together, we're all synchronized, we all know what part we play and where to, uh, what we all have to do that day. You gotta tell this guy who just busts his butt, dude. What did I tell you to do? And what did I tell? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hey, that's fine. You're my friend. I respect you. You're sorry, but you ain't getting paid today, and you ain't getting paid the next four shows. Deal with it. It, you know, it's it's showtime. He gets carried away, but you you love him nonetheless, and you just you shake your head and point your finger and just like, don't do that next time, please. And don't do this shit at home. And don't do it in your backyard. If you're not trained, don't do it. Don't tell people you're a wrestler. Because you watch TV and you go copy it in your backyard. Because guys like that, they'll beat the shit out of you for real. Everybody knows what goes into wrestling matches. We're storytellers. We're out there, we're telling stories. Do we know what's going to happen at the end of the match? Maybe we do, maybe we don't. Does it matter? No, it doesn't. The ending never matters. Watch any movie. It's it's not necessarily who wins and loses. It's the journey they take you on. That was probably the ass kicking of my life, to be honest with you. You know, I mean, I fought lots of tough guys, lots of tough guys. You know, you got to be a tough guy to be a wrestler. You know, people say it was a good match. You give the fans what they want, but I mean, I was surviving. You know, how I beat them, I just had to outthink them. Small packets at the end, but you know. That day, the better man won, but I don't know if the tougher man won, you know. I'm too stupid to know better. I'm too crazy, so.